Today I'm going to be reviewing the Red Audio. Yes, it's pronounced Red Audio. A lot of people call it Redodo. It is a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate, 100 amp hour capacity. It can take up to 100 amp charge and also discharge rate. Group size 24, so it's small and compact. It has Bluetooth, so you can monitor it from the app. Physical size 10 inches by 6.5 inches by 8.25 inches. And it weighs 21.5 pounds. I have charged the battery to 100% with my Stanley charger here. And right now the battery is at 13.45 volts, which is, according to the user manual, 100%. Let's go ahead and do a capacity test. I set my tester with the low voltage cutoff down to less than 8 volts because I want the battery BMS to cut off the power first before the battery tester, which is around 10 volts. This capacity tester can only do 150 watts maximum. And at 13 volts, that's about 10 amps. So I'm just going to discharge it at 10 amps. Let's start by turning this knob here. There you go. Exactly 10 amps, which is going to take about 10 hours. It has been 3 hours and the capacity is 30 amp hours so far. Voltage is 12.8 volts. I have recorded everything on my piece of paper so we can graph it later on. Right now we are at 6 hours 15 minutes. Capacity 62 amp hours. Voltage 12.7 volts. We are almost 9.5 hours. Capacity 94 amp hours. 12.2 volts. Yay, yeah, we made it 100 amp hour, 9 hour 57 minutes. And it's still running though. We are right now at 10.7 volts. All right, we are done. The battery BMS just cut off power. You see the voltage out of the main terminal is only 286 millivolts. My discharger just shut down. Let's see what we got here. The total capacity is 100.76 amp hour. So that is right on the money. 100 amp hour. Total time is 10 hour 1 minute. So it's right on 10 hour mark. And I've got everything recorded on my paper. I've got more data down here after 9 hours 40 minutes and that's because there are more changes here than the rest of the test. Here is the discharge curve for the data I've collected. It looks pretty typical for a lithium iron phosphate battery. So right now the battery is completely depleted. We need to recharge it. So how do you recharge a lithium iron phosphate battery? On the right side, I have a lead acid battery charger. Technically, this can charge a lithium iron phosphate because it puts out about 14.4 volts. But because the charging parameter of a lead acid battery is different, sometimes it puts out more than 15 volts. So it's not recommended to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery. On the left side, I also have a lead acid battery charger, but this is a newer model. It has lithium option, so it's programmed to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery. And that is what I'm going to use. But the problem now is it still can't charge the battery because the battery output now is only 178 millivolts. The charger needs to sense a 12 volt from the battery. But right now, the BMS shut down, so there's no output on the terminal, so it's not charging. We're going to need to wake up the BMS first for it to put out 12 volts. You can use another lead acid battery 
and hook it up in parallel you can use another 12 volt power supply but today I'm going to try something different I'm going to use a 9 volt battery and hook it up to the lithium iron phosphate battery in parallel and hopefully it will wake up the BMS so what I'm going to do is to touch the terminal just for a few seconds I already hooked up the positive terminal over there now we are just going to touch this terminal and watch the number on my charger it should show the voltage after it sends the 12 volt output but right now you don't see anything because there's nothing on the output let's see 9 volt Eleven volt. There you go. I think it's on. There. The charger. You can hear a relay click. The charger is charging the battery right now at twenty-five amps, and the battery voltage at the main terminal right now is eleven point three volts. So it's working great with just the nine volt battery. So just tap on here just for like, I would say five seconds or so. It's got Bluetooth, so let me show you the Bluetooth function. On your phone, search for Redodo in your app store and download this utility and then open. And I have already connected the Bluetooth. So let's open it. It shows the state of charge of the battery. It's got power, current, and voltage. All this data is shown in real time. I'm going to hook up my light bulb and show you what we got. So instantly you will see the power 60 watts negative number because it's drawing power out of the battery. Current is 4.8 amp and the battery voltage 13.2. On the top we'll show this charging or charging when you charge the battery and the time you have left until the battery runs out. Down here is battery information and we'll show you the temperature of the battery, uh, the cycle life one because I only charged it once. It was a new battery. If you click here on device control, it will show you remove device and turn off function. On the top, it has a discharge function option. You can turn on and off the BMS with this function. So right now it's on and you can see my light bulb is on. If I click on it, off and the light bulb is off. Let's try and turn it back on. There we go. So you can remotely turn on and off the BMS by Bluetooth. And that is all the functions you can get from this app. The capacity shown on here is not actually the capacity of this battery. This battery is 100 amp hour, not 85 amp hour. This number represents the amount of charge available on the battery right now. So right now it's 84% state of charge and you have up to 85.7 amp hour that you can use. The Bluetooth control on this phone, the range is pretty far away. I can control this from another room with the door closed. That's quite far away for Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and do a discharge test. This battery is rated at 100 amp continuous discharge. I have it hooked up to my 2000 watt inverter and a 1500 watt heater. Let's see what we got. Right, it's on low. Sixty-seven, seventy, eighty, ninety, ninety-two amps. Almost one hundred amps right now. It's going down because the heater is hot enough. Let's see what we got. So it looks like we're going to be around 80 amps continuous. Yep, about 
80 amps continuous and it seems to run just fine no problem here let's take a look at the uh, Bluetooth app you can see it's discharging at 77 amps on the app on my meter 79 amps so that's very close the battery is rated at 100 amp continuous if I run over 100 amp the BMS will shut down let's see how long it will run when I run it over 100 amps I got my timer here and I want to see how long it will run when it's over 100 amps start 140 150 yep all right around nine seconds and the recovery time is about 11 seconds meaning after the BMS shut down it takes about 11 seconds for the BMS to turn back on you can see right now it's 13 volts so there you go the battery runs fine for anything below 100 amps for anything over 100 amps you got about 10 seconds before the BMS shuts down and then after the BMS shuts down it takes about another 10 seconds for it to turn back on it's time for a tear down I'm going to remove the cover and show you what's inside this cover is glued together by silicone and it's quite challenging to remove I got it out already and because silicone is very flexible I pry it out it springs right back in so I have to really go in and cut the silicone inside here it takes quite a bit of time and these are the tools that I use to pry this out I got the lid out Let's go ahead and pull this whole thing out. Now I should be able to slide it out. There you go. I got the battery out. And the first thing that strikes me is that blinking light on that little board right there. That is the Bluetooth module. It's blinking because right now it's not connected to my phone. So if I press this button on my phone, it will connect and the LED stay lit and it stops blinking. If I turn it off and disconnect, then the LED will blink. What that means is I cannot turn this Bluetooth module off. It's always on. And that means it will consume a small amount of power from your battery all the time. Let's take a look at the BMS. It looks like it's made by Red Audio. 100 amp charge and 100 amp discharge. From the negative terminal of the battery, it goes out to the BMS by three size 10 wires. Three size 10 wires is equivalent to about size 5. It's a little bit bigger than size 6. From here, it goes through the BMS for control and then it goes out to the main terminal on the top. And then the positive terminal goes straight from the positive terminal of the battery goes straight to the top terminal. We got two heat sensors, T1 and T2. T1 goes to the battery cell and is glued by silicone on the side. T2 goes down to the BMS. Let's go ahead and test the heat sensor. It should stop charging when it's cold enough. All right, it's charging right now at about five amps. I got my ice bowl here. And let's see if that is cold enough. Yep, stop charging. Stop charging. There you go. Now I'm gonna warm it up again. You can see it's charging back up again. Let's take a look at the cells. We got four prismatic cells here and all the terminals are welded together and take a look at the quality of the welds that is so nice and secure there's also a qr code on the cells let me figure out what kind of cell this is well a search on the qr code does not give me any results 
I looked over the internet and it looks very similar to an Eve cell. Take a look at that. And it's very close, but I cannot confirm what kind of cell that is. Nevertheless, it looks like it's a very good quality, well-built cells. Overall, it looks like a well-built battery. All of the wires are routed nice and neat. Looks like a good quality BMS. It's time to glue the case back together. But before I do that, I have to remove all the silicone from the bottom case and the top case. It took me quite a bit of time. It's really a pain to remove all of this silicone. I'm using my homemade glue made from acetone and plexiglass mixture. This glue works great for ABS plastic and the case of this battery is made from ABS plastic. At least that's what it says in the user manual. If you don't know what kind of plastic it is, you can test it using a piece of Lego and a little bit of this glue. I did it in my previous video and I will put the link down below. I'm going to use a syringe to inject the glue into the grooves here. This glue dry real fast. So I'm gonna have to do it really quickly. Now, I'm just gonna put it on. Upside down, that is. There we go. That is it. It's been a few hours. Clothes should be dry by now. Let's see what we got. You ready? Oh yeah, that's holding. That's not gonna come out. So there you have it. Red ODO. It's an awesome battery. The only thing I wish it would have is an external LCD display, maybe somewhere on the top here, to display the state of charge of the battery. But you can measure the state of charge of the battery using a multimeter. And right now it's 13.34 volts. And according to the user manual, and you can look at the chart here, that's equivalent to 100% state of charge. Everything else checked out fine. Bluetooth, discharge rate, capacity, smaller size, and most importantly, lithium iron phosphate battery, which is rated for 4,000 cycle. If you charge and discharge the battery every day, that's going to last 11 years. And that's if you charge and discharge it every day. I don't use it every day, so it's going to outlast me. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.